Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome friends to another interesting topic for today that is a studio system in Hollywood. Now, what do you understand by the term a studio system? So, first let uh, first of all let me take you uh, to the great studios in Hollywood. What are they? I am sure many of you are familiar with that and some of these great studios still exist even today. Warner Brothers, MGM, RKO, Paramount, Columbia, those were the great studios that shaped Hollywood film industry. It is uh, instructive to note that these were not just studios that produce films, but each studio had a system of its own. We have to remember that the studio system in especially in the old Hollywood period, the golden year uh, era or years of Hollywood was a very well oiled machinery and one of its tasks was to regularly produce films as well as regularly churn out stars. So, star machinery you know it was a very integral part of a studio system, its stars were important, they may no longer be today it may you know today things have changed a lot and it, uh, we started feeling the winds of change from the 60s onwards but that's something that we are gradually moving towards we have to understand how it all began so stars were important and a machinery was important to churn out films as well as stars at frequent regularity uh, one reason for the enormous popularity of films was the existence and presence of the stars. People went to movies to watch the favorite stars and therefore, the studio machinery worked hard to create stars, build up stars and to work out their images and also to maintain those carefully cultivated images. So, that is important. Hollywood lore is full of such incidents and anecdotes where uh, ordinary people were turned into stars through the great machinery, the studio machinery and their images were con constructed and that was a part of the studio, um, studio PR. So, it was important that these actors and actresses they should be built up and their images should be create, created, cultivated and maintained. Any dent to these images was considered detrimental to the existence of the star as well as to the system. So, stars were called matinee idols that is the term that the studios and media use for them. They had a specific images that were lapped up or lapped up by the worshipping public. So, uh, we had people such as John Barrymore, Douglas Fairbanks Banks who were uh, these actors were known for the swashbuckling persona. We had Rudolph Valentino the ultimate screen lover especially during the silent era and Mary Pickford. Mary Pickford many of you would be familiar with. Um, she has a, a starred in a couple of films with Charlie Chaplin. We also had Norma Shearer, Gloria Sonson and Greta Garbo. So, they, those were the ultimate stars of the silent period of the silent era. Some of them of course, also went on to work when movies went talkies. Stars were the most precious commodities for a studio. Someone who would lure the public inside the film theatres, the stars sold the pictures. This is also a case uh, very true with our Indian film industry. Okay. In Hollywood things have changed, stars no longer are used to lure the public inside the film theatres. Consider a movie like Jaws or uh, you know even a, a more recently films like such as Avatar. Okay. So, we do not have 
stars we don't the hollywood doesn't need stars at least you know so, um, so regularly as our films do and uh, when i say as our films do we have to of course um, look at the larger context and i'm not talking about the avangard or more experimental films that are made in our country by and large we live in a star driven system just like the old hollywood system the studio system this was also a period when magnum opuses and high cost films were very often commercially and critically successful for example irwin thalberg who was associated with mgm his mutiny on the bounty camille and gone with the wind were some of the major blockbusters of the 30s now mgm was managed by the great louis b mayer uh, with irving thalberg as the production manager along with david o selznick they created some of the greatest films of all time such as gone with the wind rebecca and duel in the sun mgm uh, mgm studio was basically uh, essentially very proud of its uh, tagline more stars than there are in heaven they were the most prosperous and most prolific studio at one point and had most of the biggest star directors and stars under contract some of the greatest mgm films of this period are anna christie grand hotel camille goodbye mr chips uh, the wizard of oz and gone with the wind which is also considered the national ultimate epic, ultimate and national epic of america david o selznick was also the most influential producer of this period having made films such as gone with the wind and uh, rebecca spellbound and also a star is born here is a clipping from the great gone with the wind please do watch it paramount was another great studio of that time it was founded in 1916 and progressed under adolf zucker the studio was very european in its approach and most of the directors and technicians had come from germany having fled the nazi regime some of the early uh, successes of this uh, studio included rudolf valentino's the shack that is uh, 1921 and blood and sand in 1922 another um, other set of great movies that came out of paramount studio were joseph von sternberg's morocco Shanghai the devil is a woman and all these films um, with Marlene Dietrich Marx brothers comedies such as Animal Crackers Monkey Business Duck Soup and Ernest Lubitsch's musical comedies and comedy of manners such as Monte Carlo and Ninochka many of these films starred Greta Garbo Warner Brothers was another great studio of this time It was a family run studio with Jack Warner as the in charge of production. Warner Brothers imposed a strict code of production efficiency on its directors, technicians and actors. And uh, interestingly the directors were expected to produce at least 5 pictures a year. The studio made, made a fast paced narratives and some of the most famous films of this period made by the studio belong to the gangster genre we have been talking about gangster genre um, through this course and also its uh, characteristic semiotic features so you may recall all those features and apply to some of the greatest films of this genre made by um, this studio such as little caesar the public enemy i am a fugitive from a chain gang The studio had a great lineup of uh, directors, including Max Reinhardt, Michael Curtis, Marvin Leroy, and uh, others. The studio also has the distinction of producing the first talking picture, the Jazz Singer. Now, um, I am aware that many of you are uh, you have been contacting me for giving you the names and spellings of these great directors. I would suggest uh, that uh, you do a little research of your own if you go to and look up 
great directors associated with Warner Brothers, many of these names would come, Paramount, MGM, many of these names would occur. 20th Century Fox was established by Daryl F. Zenuk, a great studio still in existence and Daryl F. Zenuk was the vice president of the studio. The studio's early successes included Watt Price Glory and F. W. Murnau's Sunrise, which I frequently keep referring to in this course. One of the studio's important directors was John Ford, who made Young Mr. Lincoln, The Grapes of Wrath and how green was my valley. Here is a clipping from sunrise, Marno sunrise, please watch it and understand the binaries between city and the rural that I keep talking about. Post war, Fox focused on making realistic films, films that were often gritty. In 1930s, however, there was a shift and Shirley Temple, the a lovable child star became the most bankable star and later Will Rogers became their star performer. From 50s onwards, the studio employed stars such as Marilyn Brando, Marilyn Monroe and Jane Russell. Columbia Pictures was founded by Henry Korn. For the most part of the 1930s, Columbia supplied the bigger studios with low budget features for double bills. Double bills a kind of a screening of a smaller film alongside a major picture. So, in order to uh, draw in a larger number of audience or um, even you know to fill in time, you had you had to give a offer a double bill of sorts. So, Columbia Pictures supplied the double bills very often, which was low budget. They had very few stars under their contract and had modest production values unlike MGM. Columbia occasionally invited successful directors from other studios to make a picture for them. Two such examples were Only Angels Have Wings and His Girl Friday, both directed by the great Howard Hawks. For a long time, the studio's major author was Frank Capra, a Sicilian immigrant and Columbia's star director. Capra believed that movies are fantasies of goodwill. After his early comedies, he settled down in the role of uh, an American preacher. So, his mor uh, movies are known for their moral didacticism. His films are extremely utopian, quite sentimental and critics have accused him of being extremely populist, re uh, trying to reinforce traditional values with, co with very cozy brand of optimism, the typical feel good cinema that many of us are uh, you know uh, critical about. His films and heroes are typically simple and the word that is often used in connection with Kaprask heroes is folksy, F O L K S Y, very folksy you know small town country boy kind of a person with simple values. And this kind of hero overcoming corrupt city sophisticates and politicians. Film historians consider his films as morally trite and if you look, watch these films today, they look terribly out of date and out of time. The studio's major films are It Happened One Night, Mr. Deed Goes to Town, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, Meet John Doe. So, these are Frank Capra films and It is a Wonderful Life. Of course, this is a uh, terrific film starring James Stewart a very popular Christmas film because it the narrative the story takes place on a Christmas Eve. Interestingly, Capra was commissioned by the US Army Chief of Staff to make a seven part documentary series called Why We Fight. Why, uh, why was uh, Capra commissioned to do that? Because by then he had acquired the image of being an American moralist. So, who better than Capra to make a film about why we fight, which is again a very utopian, idealist and sentimental kind of take on war. Here is a scene from Mr. Smith Goes to Washington starring James Stewart. So, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the scene and we will meet for our next class.